With a modded Xbox, you can enjoy games from DVD media, disc backup files, and Xbox Live Arcade packages. So, let me show you how to install all of these directly onto your Xbox hard drive so you can play any game you want. Hi and welcome to Bytes and Bits. The Xbox 360 is a great console to own, even today. It has a fantastic catalogue of games, and the great part is that you can modify it so that you can get access to that full catalogue, either using um, actual DVD games, or downloaded ISO files, or even backups of Microsoft Live Arcade files. Now, if, you haven't, if you're not familiar with modding and hacking an Xbox, then please do have a look at my um, video tutorial, uh, which covers taking a standard retail Xbox all the way through the full modding process, through to being able to install these games then directly onto your hard drive. And I'll put a link to that down in the description below. But in this video then, I'm going to actually walk you through that for the full process of taking any game that you want, so whether it is on a DVD, whether it is some backup ISO file that you have, or whether you've got a dump from a Microsoft Live Arcade game, we'll take you through how to convert that and then to a format that will allow you to install the files directly onto the internal hard drive on your Xbox 360. And that will, of course, give you access to the entire catalogue so that you can play absolutely any game that you want. Now, before we get started, one of the things you're going to need for this is, of course, your modded Xbox 360. You're then going to need some sort of USB drive, either a USB stick, or I've got a um, SSD drive here with a USB adapter. But you'll need some way of transferring these files from your PC, where we're going to prepare them, onto your Xbox itself. Now, these are quite large files, so we're going to be looking at 7 or 8 gigabytes per game. So do make sure that you choose a USB drive which is big enough to cope with that. So let's get straight into transferring these files from our media then directly onto our Xbox. So the easiest way to start this is to use a single disc game on DVD. And this will give us a good understanding of how we deal with these um, media files before moving on to multi-disc games. So we're going to have a look at what files are involved with the game and where we need to put those to actually install them on our hard drive. So let's, let's take this Tiger Woods game and stick this DVD into our Xbox. So that DVD is now going into the console and you can see Aurora is now checking that. And there we have the DVD fully inserted. So if we go across, we can see that we now have our Tiger Woods um, golf game sitting in the drive. So to um, see what we need to do, we, we need to have a look at what's on this disc. So we, to do that, we'll use our file manager inside Aurora, and that's on the system menu. So our back button will take us up and we can use file manager from here. And you can see we can now look at the various storage devices on our console. And one of those, of course, is the DVD. So if we have a look at that, all, all we'll see on the DVD is a collection of files and folders. And, and the game, it, that, that's simply what it is. Um, there, there's no um, hidden firmware or anything like that. It's just a collection of files on the DVD. So to install this onto our hard drive, all we need to do is to copy the files from here and then put them on our hard drive. And again, we can do that with our file manager application. So you can see on the bottom there, we have a number of buttons and the X button is our select. So we can just simply select each of the files and folders on our DVD. And again, I'm, I'm in the root of my DVD. So if I select everything in the root, then that will be everything um, that is on that DVD. I can then go across to the left hand side come down to the copy icon and then copy those files and folders. And you can see we now have four queued. Again, each of these files and folders, the folders themselves will of course have lots of subfolders, um, but this will copy everything we need. We can now go up a directory, which will take us back to our um, storage devices. We can then go on to our hard drive. And now we need to make sure that we put um, our game files into separate folders. 
Uh, again, the way you organize this obviously up to yourself. Um, if you followed through my original hacking um, or, the, or the RGH3 mod um, video, you will know that we created a games folder. And inside that games folder, we then created folders for each individual game. So I'll, I'll show you the basic idea of how we, how we create that. So I'm on the root of my hard drive. If I want to create a folder using Aurora, I go across to the left hand menu and I go up to the top to new directory. I create a new directory. And I'm going to call this one games too. So if I backspace that and come in here, we'll click done for that. So again, we, we only need one games directory. I'm really creating this games too, just to show you the process, because we do need to link this up inside Aurora to get it to actually find the games. Okay, so as I said, um, if you've already got a games folder, just put your game inside that one. But we're going to put our Tiger Woods inside this Games 2 folder. So I'm going to go inside and open that one. I now need to create a folder specifically for the Tiger Woods game. So again, I'm going to go across to my left hand menu, a new directory. And then in this one, we're going to call this, of course, Tiger Woods. And OK that. Now, once we've created the directory, to go inside the directory. And remember, we had our files all queued up for copying. If we now come down to the left hand menu at the bottom, there's the paste option, and we can paste our files in there. Now, this is obviously going to take a bit of time to run through because we've got about seven or eight gigabytes worth of data. So let me just run, let that run through, and then I'll see you in a second. Those files have now copied across onto our hard drive. The next step is to make sure that Aurora knows where to look to find our game files. And we're going to use things called paths. So the way a path works is if I come out of here and up into our or the root of our hard drive. So we've got our games to folder and we're going to tell Aurora that we are putting games inside this folder. So what Aurora is going to do is we're going to tell it that the games are inside games too, but we then need to tell it how deep inside the folder structure to look for our game files. So if we think about it here, so we're in our we're in our root folder. So we're going to go into our games two folder, which is one layer deep, into our game folder, which is two layers deep, and that's where we're going to find this default.xex file, which is the actual executable for this game. So let's um, now have a look at how we set these paths up. So we need to come out of our file manager. And we need to go into our settings menu with the start button. And then come down to our content. And you can see we there have our manage paths on the right hand side. So I'm going to go across to manage paths. So you can see we've already got a couple of paths defined in there. And one of course is of those is that games folder. But we're going to add in our games to folder as well. So we're going to click on the add button. We're then going to select the change button. Once we've done that, we're then going to tell it which is the base folder that we wanted to start to look in. We're going to go on our hard drive and down to games two. Once we've highlighted that, you can see down the bottom, we can tell it that that's the one we want to use by using the Y button to select it. There we can see that our path is now set to that games two folder. We can then come down and set our depth to two. Now again, um, this depth, um, that is basically trying to make sure that Aurora doesn't end up going deeper and deeper inside our folder structure, which will just really slow the whole process down. So it isn't actually uh, an issue if you do set it deeper. And indeed, we will see in a little bit that we do need to do that for our uh, multi-disc games. But I'm going to set it to two for now because that will, of course, find our game in here. So uh, we've got that set. Um, so we've got our folder, we've got our depth. We just need to come down then to our save and we're going to save that. So once we've got our path set, we can ask Aurora to scan those paths for now. And that should then get it to pick up on our game. So if we come out of, of that, if we go across, we should now find that we have two versions of Tiger Woods sitting in there. So the one with the red outline is our DVD. So if I eject that, we should now find that that one disappears. 
and we're left behind with our green outlined one. So that is our Tiger Woods from our Games 2 folder on our hard drive, and that game should now be ready to play. EA Sports, it's in the game. And then we have our Tiger Woods um, game up and running. So let's just come out of that. So that's how we extract the raw files from a DVD and install that then as a folder on our hard drive. Now there is an alternative route using something called a God container or a game on demand container. So let's have a look at that next. So first off, we've obviously got a copy of Tiger Woods sitting here on our hard drive. So let's have a look at how we can actually in uninstall that. So again, if we go to our game and then use the Y button to get to its details, if we come down to the bottom uh, men menu button at the bottom there, you can see at the moment it says rename. But if you look as well, we can use the left on our D-pad to get more options. So if I go across, you can see we can hide and we can also then delete. So if I select that, it's basically asking me, am I sure? What it's basically going to do, it's going to delete that folder you can see there. Uh, and that, of course, will just simply uninstall the game for us. That's, that's as simply as we need to do. Just delete the folder and our game is gone. So there we are. Everything's deleted and we now no longer have the Tiger Woods game on our system. So let's have a look at how we can install that then as one of these God containers. So a God container is just simply a different way of copying the files from our DVD onto our hard drive. So in our previous example, all we did was we copied the raw files simply into a folder, which was very straightforward. But what's going to happen with the God format is that our Xbox is basically going to take an image of the DVD, copy that into a number of data files, and then save those data files onto our hard drive. So effectively creating an image of the DVD using those data files. Now it needs to save them into a special place. So if we have a look on our system here in our file manager, if we go on to our hard drive and into our content folder, we should see there our folder with 16 zeros. And if you remember back to um, the RGH mod video, if you've watched that, um, we did have to create that at the very start of the process. And if we come inside there, you'll see that there already are a number of folders in there. And these are, in effect, God packages from various games that I've been installing. And one of those, of course, is the XEX menu that we installed from the very, very start of our system setup. So this is where our, our God file is going to end up. So you do need to make sure that you do have this folder available. So let's come back out of here and see how we get that um, going. Okay, so I've put the DVD back in again, and we can see it there highlighted in red. We need to go into our system menu, and we need a special script to allow us to rip the contents from our DVD as this God container. So I'm going to go into scripts. So we should have an Aurora repo browser um, installed in there by default. So I'm going to launch that. And that will then let me um, import or, or install a number of scripts. So the one we want is in the utility script section. And we want this Aurora disk to God installer. So let's um, select that. So it says here, um, um, do we want to install this? And yes, we do. And that should now be installed on our system. So back up, we should find that ready for us to launch. So we launch our disk to God installer. And now we're going to tell our system where we want to save our God files. Remember, we said that goes on our hard drive in our content folder. And then we're going to select the zeros folder because that's where we're going to save our God um, files. So it's now saying, um, is it OK to create these um, content directories? Of course, yes, that is. So it's getting ready to produce that. And now it's starting to parse the content on our DVD. And you can see there it's going to create 34 data files. Um, so rather than copying across the hundreds of files it did before, it's now going to break it down just to 34 data files and copy those, cop copy those across in blocks. So let's just let that run through. It, it's still going to take a bit of time to do that, 
um, but let's let that run through. So once the transfer is complete, it will ask us to scan for new content. So we can just say yes to that. And then we should be able to come back out into our Aurora desktop and see if our game is there. So as you can see, we still only have the DVD version showing, which is outlined in red here. It hasn't picked up on our newly installed God container. So if you do find that you install a game and this is the case, uh, really there is sort of one problem which um, this is going to be, and that is to do with the paths that we have set up for Aurora to scan. So let's go across into our Aurora paths and see if we can spot the problem. So into settings, down to content, and there we can see in our paths, we haven't yet set up a path that's going to scan that content 000 folder. So of course that's why it is not picking up on our new God container. So let's just set that up now. So if we click on the add a path, then change location, we now need to go out to our hard drive, our content folder, and then select the, the zero folder, then come back in. We now need to set our depth, and, and I would suggest setting a depth of four for this folder, because we're going a bit deeper. So we can save that, then come back out of here and scan now, and then that should hopefully have picked up now on our new game. So let's come back out to our Aurora desktop, and there we can see we now have two copies of Tiger Woods. One of those is in green, so that means it's scanning now from our hard drive. So it's now installed that God container for us. But if we look at our new hard drive version, we can see that the name hasn't quite come across correctly. So let, let's fix that. So if we um, select our game with the Y button, we can go down to the bottom option in our menu, which is Rename. And inside here, you can see we can then just adjust the name that appears on our Aurora list of games. So just adjust that, click Done when you're finished, and then we should now have a nicely named game sitting now on our hard drive ready to play. So if we actually have a look and see exactly how that God container has been structured, we can come out of, of there. We can then go into our file manager and see what's actually happened on the hard drive. So we go into our content folder and our zeros folder. So we can see we actually have a folder for Tiger Woods now in that zeros folder, and that is our God container. So if we have a look inside that, we can see that we then have some deeper folders that go into that. We now have then this little, little um, file here with that play icon. That is the actual launcher for our God container. And then we have a data folder here, again with um, a, a code number in front of it. And if we go inside that, you'll see we then have lots of these data files. So these are the actual image files of the DVD. So, so that's really how our God container is structured. So it really is just a folder with some files in it in a particular format. So we now know that um, there are two ways of putting the files onto our hard drive. So either as um, a God container or as just simply a set of ripped files from our DVD sitting in a folder on our hard drive. So you might be wondering why we would choose one method over the other. Well, well really, um, the choice here is in either we want to have flexibility or we want to have ease of copying. So if we look inside our um, ripped folder, we can see that we now have literally hundreds of little files sitting around. So these are the raw files that make up our game. And there is a community which allows you to modify some of these files. So you can swap out various artwork or sounds or, or code or hacks and so on. Uh, and again, you need to have access to the raw files to be able to do that. The God containers, on the other hand, if we have a look in there, you can see that the game has been um, just stripped down to about 30 or 40 data files, and that's all we then need. So, so it makes the game much, much easier to copy from one computer to another. But of course, we've now lost access to those individual files, so we're no longer able to customize the actual game itself. And, and that really is the choice. Either we want to have ease of transfer um, with a small number of nice, um, large, bulky files, or we want then the ability to edit individual files, but we'll take the hit that it may take quite Quite a while to actually package up the files and move them from one computer to the other. So, so, so it's really down to that choice.
So now we know about the two sort of ways of getting files onto our hard drive. We need to look at how we can replicate that process instead of using the actual DVD media, but actually using an ISO backup file. So ISO files are basically images of the data on the DVD drive, and they're then saved as a file that you can use in your computer. Now, the images of Xbox 360 discs, you, you can't actually use them directly on your PC. So we, we can't mount this as a virtual DVD drive and have a look at the files. We actually need some uh, programs to help us open those and then access the data inside them. Now, ISO files, obviously, you're going to get hold of those from, from somewhere. Um, either you will have created those from your own DVDs, or, or you may find them somewhere on the internet. Now, as regards these files on the internet, obviously, um, all of this Xbox 360 software is still under copyright. So to, do, do please make sure that you check the copyright rules in your region and make sure you stay on the right side of the law. But to actually work with a file, so if you do get hold of an ISO file, then we need, as I said, we need some software to work with that. So I'm going to suggest two pieces of software to you. One is the Xbox Image Browser. And again, links to all of these uh, applications I'll put in the description down below. Um, so we'll need to make download a copy of that from this web page and then just save that somewhere on your computer. So these are gonna come down as zip files. And then we have a second application, which is this 360 MP GUI. And again, you'll get it from this web location over here. So just download that file as well and save that onto your PC. So we need to now go and use these files. So if I come across into uh, my Xbox folder, right into here, OK, so we've got our two downloaded files here um, and we simply need to extract those then to folders um, in this in this area. So I'm just going to come down and I'm going to extract them to a, a folder each. So once we've got those two folders ready, we do need a little bit of setting up on the Xbox image browse. So if I go into that folder. There is the application sitting there, and if you try and run that the first time, you might find that it doesn't work, and it will be talking about not having this ActiveX control installed. So if you look at the README file, so if I bring that up here, you'll see that it does give you some instructions on how to set that up. Um, so really what we need to do is we have to register that into the operating system as a piece of extra software. So the way in which we do that, okay, so we're going to need to run this command. So I'm just going to copy that just for now. So we need to take this file. So we need to copy that. And then we need to go into our Windows system folder. So not, not the system 32, but the Windows system folder and save a copy of it in there. Once we get in there, we next need to open up a command prompt as an administrator. So go to your Windows menu and type CMD. And then you should have the option to open as administrator. So you will get a security prompt, which you need to authorize. So this will drop us into our Windows System 32 folder. So we now need to use some terminal commands to run this. So we're actually in the wrong folder because remember we copied it into Windows System. So we want to do a CD, so backslash, then Windows slash system. And that should take us into the correct folder. If you do a DIR command, that you should then see that we have that um, ActiveX control sitting there. And then we're going to use that command that was specified in the help file. And uh, we just run that, and that should then register that a component into our um, operating system. So we don't need the command line anymore. We should then find that if we come back over to our image browser, that if we click on, double click on that, that should run the application for us. So we're all ready to actually extract some of these ISO files now. Now, I, I personally prefer to use the GUI version here. So if I go into that folder and into the M22, you'll find the application sitting in there. So the way that this one works then is that, of course, we need to go off and find our ISO file. So if I go and select an ISO file, I can select this F1 2013. You'll see that it brings up a lot of information about that file and various title IDs and, and so on. If we want to have a look at what's 
on the DVD. We can't actually do it from this, but it does have an, a link out to the Xbox image browser, which was that second application that we downloaded. So if I open that, you can see we're now in the image browser and we can actually see the files that are inside the actual DVD. Now, if we want to, we can extract from here by just right clicking on the DVD ISO and clicking on extract. And it will then just simply ask you to select a folder um, where you want to extract these files to. But I actually prefer doing the extraction in this GUI version. So we do need to tell it where we want to um, put our files. Now, what is going to happen is it's actually going to package our files in a folder um, for us. So we don't need to go through that step. We just simply need to specify a folder where we want all of our separate folders, each containing one DVD to be put. So I'm going to select a folder here and I'm going to find one on my hard drive. So I've now selected my output folder. There are a couple of options in here. So um, each of these games generally has this system update folder, which is not always needed. Um, I tend to just leave it on anyway. We do want to create a game folder to put all of these files into, which is which is why I'm using this application. And then we can specify the name for the game folder. So obviously it, it generally picks a fairly um, useful name by automatically. So we've got the, the file selected. We just simply then need to say extract ISO and it will go off and do that for us. Now the extraction window um, does look a little bit um, odd. So it's running in a command window and you can see that it is extracting it. Um, it's not quite getting the, the, um, in the, the, the page layout correct for that. Um, and it does look as if absolutely nothing is happening. But believe me, it is actually running through the extraction process, even though you can't see any of these numbers changing on the screen here. So do just let it run uh, and then we'll have a look at the results once that's finished. So once those files have been extracted, you should get this message popping up. And that process will take about three or four minutes, uh, or well, actually probably closer to five or six minutes, to be honest. Um, but then if we have a look at what that's done then, so if I go across onto my um, hard drive where I've got my games and into my extracted folder, we should find we have that F1 2013 folder sitting in there. If I open that up, you can see we now have all of those files that relate to that DVD. So we have our default XEX and so on. So really, um, that is the block of files. Well, obviously we can we can now have it packaged up as a whole folder. So we really just need to get that folder transferred across to our Xbox. To transfer these files, all we need is a USB drive. So I've got an SSD drive connected up um, as a USB drive on my system here. So again, you need to make sure that it is formatted as FAT32. Um, otherwise the Xbox isn't going to read it. But you can see here, I've got a 500 gigabyte SSD and, and that just helps me speed up the process a little bit. So what we do is we simply are going to copy that folder onto our SSD drive or our USB drive. We then pop the USB drive into our Xbox. And again, uh, sometimes it can take a little bit of time for that to be recognized. So do just give it a minute or so. If I now go into my file manager, uh, we should have our USB drive sitting there. And there we have our F1 2013 folder. So again, all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come down, I'm gonna select that, go across to the side, copy that, then come back out. And then I'm going to put it onto my hard drive, into my games two folder, off to the side and paste that. And that will of course then paste those files into that folder. So I'm just going to abort that because uh, obviously we're just using this as a little demo, um, but that would be the process. And of course, once we've done that, and uh, because this games two folder is on one of our paths for scanning, that game will then be picked up and we're all ready to play. So that's the process then, which is exactly the same as it would have been if we were just simply extracting the files and copying them directly off our DVD. So next we need to have a look at how we can do this then as this God format or this God package. So I'm just going to get rid of this folder here because we don't need it anymore. And let's have a look back on our PC at creating a God package.
So back on our computer, uh, we're going to need a package that will help us take our ISO file and then convert it into this game on demand package. So if you head across to this web address, we'll come to this page. And again, link, links will be in the description down below. Um, so ISO to God is a, 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 an application on Windows, which will do this. So basically what it's going to do, it's going to allow us to open up that ISO file. It'll take all the files out of there and then rebuild it as one of these God packages, which we can then, of course, copy across onto our Xbox. So if you scroll down the page, again, there's various instructions on how to use it there. But again, you'll come to this download link. Now, it does mention that this download link will get flagged or can get flagged as a, a malicious piece of code by your uh, internet protection software. And again, mine does that um, for me. So if, if, I, if I click on that and try to download that, it does come up, up, up as a dangerous download. So to so get around that in Chrome, we need to go to our download section and you can see it sitting there. Uh, and we need to, say, need to say that we want to keep this file and keep anyway. So that will then, of course, now save it onto our computer. Now, um, again, if, if that does worry you, again, this particular website here um, does try and keep control of these downloads. So if you're getting it from this download and the link used on this page, then that should be safe. Uh, but again, make sure you do scan things and just make sure that you're happy to download that and, and run it. So we now have that downloaded. So let's go and have a look at, at the file. So there we have the archive file coming down. And we just need to extract that again um, into, this, into this folder here and into its own folder within this folder. If we do that, and there we have our ISO to God. So if I open that up, you can see we now have two files in there. So the um, top one, this ISO to God, that's the one we actually run. I think the second um, executable down here is used by the main one to actually do the extractions. Um, so if we open up the ISO to God, so there are a few settings that we need to um, set up before we can actually use this package. So if you go into the settings section, the, the software works by taking our ISO file and it's going to strip out the files from that and then rebuild an optimized ISO file, which takes up less disk space. And to do that, it's going to need somewhere to do this rebuilding. So we need to specify a folder on our computer where it can actually rebuild these um, optimized ISOs. So we do need to go and specify that. So just use the browse button, browse out to your computer and find somewhere where we have some space to do that. It's then going to take that optimized ISO file and convert that into the God package that we need. And obviously that's going to end up with a folder that we need to transfer across to our Xbox. So we need to store that folder again somewhere on your hard drive. So again, we can, we can go off and browse and just specify that folder. Now, because we are getting some large files here, um, those do need to be transferred around between these folders. So I, I would very strongly advise that you keep your ISOs that we've just um, that you've got hold of from somewhere, and both of these output and rebuild paths on the same hard drive, so that it's simply moving files around rather than copying them from disk to disk. Uh, it, it will obviously work either way round, but it will just go a lot faster if you have everything on the same hard drive. So once we've got those um, uh, folders set up, and again, do, do make sure that the hard drive that you're using has enough disk space. So um, while the process is going, we could have both the ISO file, which could be seven or eight gigabytes, the rebuilt ISO file, which again will be a few gigabytes, and the output God file, which again will be another sort of few gigabytes. So we could have potentially sort of, you know, about 20 to, 20 to 25 gigabytes worth of data just for this one game while we're rebuilding it. So do make sure you have enough space on the hard drive that you use. Now as well, um, we do need to set up, another, there are a few other options here which are automatically set up. Um, and the important one here is the padding. So the full ISO rebuilt option is the best one here. So this is where it will actually optimize the ISO file, strip out any unneeded or unnecessary data and just save um, as small a file size as it can. So that, that can drastically reduce the size of these um, rebuilt God files if we do that. So leave that um, as it should be. You'll also see that there is an FTP transfer section here. So um, 
if you if you have followed my setup guide um, for hacking your uh, Xbox, then we did cover FTP transfers. So there is an option to set up an FTP server on your Xbox and actually transfer files across to it over your network. Now that is something you can set up here, um, but I tend to use USB because it is it is quite a bit faster to do it about using just a USB drive that we can just simply plug into our Xbox. So we've got that all set up. So let's save those changes. We then just simply need to go and add an ISO. So I'm going to go off and browse for one and we'll use that F1 2013 again. So you can see that it's having a look at that file and it's now discovered it here. So we've got a name for it. We have a title ID, a media ID, and it's noted that it is a single disk game and we are using disk one of one. We have got our mode set to full ISO rebuild and we've got our output and build paths all specified. So we can then simply add that to our list. And what we're doing here is we can actually build up a list of ISO files that we want it to process and then process them all in one go. So we can actually batch process at this point, which does speed up a lot of uh, the process. But let's just work with this one file. So once we've got it all set up, we can just hit the convert button and that will start to process it. Now this process, again, is going to have to do all that rebuilding and then conversion. It can take a bit of time. It's going to take a few minutes to run through. So let's just left, leave that going and come back when it's finished. So once that's finished, um, and again, you can see there that it took nine minutes, 42 seconds to, to produce that God file. We can have a look on our computer. So if we go across into our file manager, if I come into my games folder and my GOD folder, we can see the actual um, file sitting there. And again, it, it, it's a single folder inside which we then have our actual game files. And again, you can see a very similar structure to we saw on the God file from um, the actual Xbox creation. And again, we have our data folder with all of our data files sitting in there. So this is what we now need to transfer across to our um, Xbox. Uh, just while we're in here, actually, if we do have a look in the in the build folder, you can see that it does leave a copy of the um, optimized ISO file sitting in there. Now, we, we don't actually need that. Um, so we can actually delete that. And that, of course, just make sure that we keep our um, folders nice and, and clean and, and keep our disk space down. Now, there is actually, if we do go into ISO to God, there is, I think, a setting in here. Um, so um, where it says here, I'll always save the rebuilt ISO, ISO. So if you don't want to have that saved, then you can actually obviously untick that. Uh, but again, I, I tend to leave it built just in case I want to reuse that um, and then just delete them manually afterwards. OK, so let's um, see if we can get this file then put onto our Xbox. So I've got my SSD drive plugged in. So let me just go back and into my GOD folder. So that's our F1 2013 sitting there. And we just simply need to copy that across onto our SSD. So back on our Xbox. Uh, we've got our USB drive plugged in. So let's go to our file manager again and down to our USB drive. And there is the package that we just created. So let's select that. And we're going to copy that across then. And we're going to come up. We're going to go onto our hard drive. And as we've seen, our God packages or game on demand packages go inside this 000 folder. So we're going to come across in here. And then we're just simply going to paste that folder into this um, 16.0 folder. And we're going to say yes. And that should start to copy across now. So once that's all copied over, our game should now be installed. So if we come up a directory out of here and up to our system, OK, so we can go into our restart and that should then allow it to relog that game. So it should now be scanning for our new games and we should find that we have our F1 coming up in here. And should be downloading our cover art. And there we have our F1 
all sitting there waiting for us to, to, to play it. And again, um, one thing I haven't talked about so far is obviously any game that we do install on here, um, we can use things called title updates. So a lot of these games come with um, downloadable updates uh, as, as of course time went by. So if we come into our um, details for our game, this little icon here lets us see the title updates. So we can move across. Um, so if we look, there's two tabs to this, one with the left bumper, one with the right bumper. So the right bumper takes us to the Unity Marketplace where we can download files. And again, I've, I've already downloaded this one. When we, when we, once we've downloaded it, we can then install it and we can then enable it. So I can select A here to either enable or disable this update. So if I enable that, which it is at the moment, uh, I can then go up and I can then go and play this game and that will install any title updates for this. And there we have our F1 uh, 2013 game up and running. And again, we've installed that as this game on demand package within our system. So let's come out of that and um, go back to our Aurora home. So that's covered getting DVDs or ISO files onto our Xbox. And so far, we've obviously been looking at single disc games. We now need to have a look at multiple disc games. So of course, some games came as two or three or four discs, and, and there really were two versions of these. So, so some multiple disc games have a play disc and then some data disks, and those data disks need to be installed first, and then you just simply run the game from the single play disk. Other multi-disc games came as true multi-disc games, where you would play through one DVD and then move on to the next DVD, and then the next DVD, and so on. So you would actually use all two, three, four disks as play disks. So let's have a look at how we can work with those. Again, we're going to be using exactly the same techniques as we've been using so far, because again, we, we, we now know how to get a disk onto our Xbox, either as the raw extracted files or as this game on demand package. We just need now to, to figure out how we can get multi-disc games on there and how we can then manage those so they work neatly within our Aurora desktop. So, so let's do that next. I've opened up this 360 MPG UI application and we're going to have a look at these multi-disc game DVDs. So if I go across and select an ISO, I can come down here. So let, let's have a look at this Red Dead Redemption. So if I select that ISO, so we can see here that it's got the information here. Um, it's identified the title and it is saying that this is disc one of two. But if I have a look in at the actual contents of that DVD, you can see that we have just a normal DVD sitting here. So what I'm looking for is, is installable content. So most multi-disc games do not have installable content. You would just simply use them as separate DVDs. But some of them do. And if I come across here and select a different ISO, so Halo 4 is one of the games which does have installable content. So we have disc 1 and disc 2 sitting here. So if I select disc 2 on Halo 4, we can see that it actually comes up as our title ID, but it's it's saying here that it's disc 1 of 1, which of course is, is wrong. But if we have a look at the actual image um, content, what we'll see is that we actually have on this disc 2 of Halo 4, we have um, what looks like normal sort of DVD stuff here, but it also has this content folder and if I actually have a look inside that content folder, you'll see that we have our 16 zeros and we then have this um, folder inside that. So this in effect looks and, and it actually is a God container. And this is the God container for the installable content for this game. And, and that's really what we're looking for. So by having this content folder with the 16 zeros and then a God folder inside that. And you can see that it filters down and eventually comes down to two data files sitting in here. Uh, of course, these are quite large data files. So this shows us that this particular game does have installable content. And really the way we're gonna handle this then is that the installable content, as we've seen, is just a GOD file, this game on demand file. So we're gonna treat that particular folder there as an installable GOD container. 
And then the disc one of this would then just be a normal DVD. So, so that's how we're going to handle our multi-disc games. So back into our 360 MPGUI application. And we're going to use Mass Effect 2 as our example for multi-disc game. Now we're going to, in this one, we're going to use just normal extracted DVD files. So we could, of course, come into this application and select each individual disc um, one by one. We can see here this is now disc one of two and extract those files out. But one of the good um, features of this uh, extraction application and, and why I use this one is it does have this batch mode. So if I come across into batch mode, what we can do is we can line up a whole series of ISO files and extract them all um, in the background. So it just lets us just line these whole things up and then just let this run. So the way we do it is we have to, of course, um, tell it which files we want to extract. So we can just drag and drop files into this list, or I can come across here and say, select my start folder, find a folder where my ISOs are stored. And once I find that, I can then scan that folder and it should give me a list of all the, full, all the ISO files in there. I can then say that I want to extract my Mass Effect 2 um, ISOs, or, or I could, of course, extract a whole range of them in one go. But I'm just going to do two for now. I'm then going to tell it where I want to put those folders. Put those, put those DVDs, sorry. So I've now selected my folder where I'm going to extract them to. And what it will do, it will create a folder inside my extracted folder for each of the disks. So we have them then as two separate disk dumps. And then I just click on the start batch and that will then run that in the background for me. So once all those files have been extracted, we can say OK to that. We can then close down that application. And if I go across to my extracted folder, we should find that we have our disk one and disk two sitting in there. So all we need to do now is to copy those onto our USB drive and then we'll go across onto the Xbox. So we've got the files transferred and the USB drive plugged into our Xbox. So we're going into our file manager, down to our um, SSD, and there we have our Mass Effect Disk 1 and Disk 2. So again, just as usual, we're going to select those two folders. We're going to come across and copy them. We're then going to come back to our hard drive, into my games folder, and I'm going to paste them in here. So let's let that run through and copy the files onto the Xbox hard drive. So once those files are copied over, we can of course come back out of here, up to our system menu. We'll do a restart just to rescan those folders. And we should have our Mass Effect disks popping up in our Aurora desktop. So you can see it's scanning for content. It's found some stuff, so let's go across and see if we can see where those are. And here we have our Mass Effect and disks popping up. So as you can see, we now have two Mass Effect 2 disks, and they do appear just to be the same one. But of course, they are two different um, DVDs. So let's work out which one's which. And the way I do that is I go into the details using the Y button, and then down the bottom, we can actually go across to the delete function. Now we're gonna select that, but of course, don't make sure that you do not actually delete the, the um, DVD, obviously. So go in here and you can see that it brings up the file name that this or the folder name that this DVD is running from. And this is disk number one. So make sure you select the no option here. So I'm going to leave this disk just as Mass Effect 2. I'm going to come back out. I'm going to go across to the other Mass Effect disk. I'm going to go into its details and then come down. And I'm going to go across to delete just to make sure that this is the, the right one. So again, you can see that this is disk two. So let's say no to that. So let's rename this one. So again, on the bottom option, if I go to the right, I do have a rename function. So let's come in here. Unless just after this one, then we're going to add in that this is disk number two.
and rename that. And then come back out. So we now have Mass Effect Disk 2 and we have Mass Effect 2, which is the, the main um, initial disk. So as we play through Mass uh, Effect 2, it's going to at certain points want to swap across to the other DVD. Now obviously with us running from a hard drive, we can't just simply swap over the DVDs. So we need some way of doing that. And that's actually an option that Dash Launch provides for us. So if we go across into Dash Launch, which is over here somewhere, and select that. If we come down to our behaviors, we will see that there is an auto swap option down below here. Now, this is going to work for the Aurora desktop that we're using at the moment. Um, if you are using something else, or if you're using a plugin such as Swap um, XEX, then, then this isn't going to work for you and you need to do it some other way. Um, but I'm, of course, using Aurora. And if you followed through my installation um, in video, you'll, you'll be doing the same as me. So I'm going to enable that. We now need to make sure that we save our INI file. So if we click on back button here, you can see that we have our menu. So if I want to save my INI file, I'll press my right bumper button. I then want to come down to my hard disk drive and I need to save my um, INI file. So again, if I bring up my menu, saving the INI file is on the X button. And we can see a little note down in the left hand corner there, um, which it has now saved that. So now we need to come out of dash launch, which is the B button. And that br brings us back into Aurora. So we now have our system all ready to run our Mass Effect 2. Now, of course, at the moment, we've got two of them showing up in our menu system. And we don't need to do that because really, because we've now got our auto swap turned on, if we just start disk one, if it needs disk two at any time or even at the very start, it will just simply swap across automatically for us. So we don't actually need to have disk two showing on our menu. So let's um, get, um, hide that. So if we come into its details with the Y button, if we come down to the bottom again, you can see that we have, if we go across to the left, we have a hide option. So if I select that, you can see it starts to gray out. And if I go back up then to my menu, we now just have the single um, mass effect disc showing in our menu. And of course, if we click on that, that will then launch that game and whatever DVD we need to have installed in our DVD drive, it will automatically then put that in for us. So that's our normal two separate DVD play discs um, game installed. And again, doing that then as raw DVD files. So let's now have a look at how we would handle an installable content game. So we're gonna have a look at Halo 4. So, again, we've noticed already that we have, if I select the ISO here, Halo 4 at disk 2 actually contains this um, con uh, installable content folder. So we need to get that out of the um, DVD. So I'm going to use the image browser in here. So we, I, I could extract the whole disk using the uh, 360MPG UI, or I can just simply come in here and I can extract just the God container that we want to um, copy across. So I'm just going to extract that. And then I'm going to put that on my hard drive. So I'm selecting my God folder folder here. And that's now extracting out just this um, package so that we can then copy that across to our Xbox. So with that GOD package extracted, that's really all we need to do with disk two. So if I close that down in here, if I go across to where I've just extracted it, you can see that we have our, our content folder, we have our 16 zeros, and we have our um, actual package sitting in there. Now, what I want you to recognize is that that, that package number, the 4D530919, that is the title ID for our disk. So let's now have a look at disk number one. And for this one, let, let's do this as one of these game on demand packages. So I'm opening up the ISO to God application that we downloaded earlier, and I'm going to add an ISO to this. So let's just go off and browse that, and let's find our Halo 4 disk one. 
So if you look at this, the thing to notice is that the title ID for this is actually the same as the title ID for the installable content. So really what's gonna happen here is, although we've extracted it now as disk two's installable content and then disk one's GOD container, when we copy them across onto our Xbox, we're actually going to merge those two folders together to, to create, in effect, one GOD package. Uh, so that's that, that's how Hello 4 will work. And again, um, just by merging the two uh, folders, um, the, the files, of course, won't overwrite because they are different files and different folders. But that will then give us our single um, GOD package. So let's let's go across and actually sort of add that one in. And then let's extract this. So once that's all finished, we can go across into our GOD extraction folder. And now you see we now have our disk one God package. And then of course, inside our content folder, we now have the um, disk two installable content. So let's um, just simply work. We're gonna copy all of this across onto our um, USB drive for transferring across. And then we'll sort it all out when we get across to the Xbox itself. So back on our Xbox, again, we're gonna go into our file manager. So I've got my USB drive already inserted. So if we come down here, there we have our folder. So again, that one there with the 1.9 at the end, that is the Halo 4 disk one. And then of course, this content folder that contains that um, GOD container for the disk two installable content. So let's, let's handle the installable content first. So if I come in here, I can click on that. And there we have the Halo 4 um, GOD container for the installable content. So all we need to do is treat that as a normal GOD package. So I'm gonna select that. I'm going to copy it. I'm then gonna come out of here. And I'm gonna go across to my hard drive. Again, into my content folder, 16 zeros. And that's where we're going to paste this folder. So if I paste that in there. And yes, we're okay for that. So we now, of course, need to let that run through and copy that um, installable content across. So once that one's copied over, we need to go back and get the disk uh, one then. So that's on our USB drive. And it's that folder there. So I just simply select that. I can now come across and copy that. And again, that, of course, um, needs to be put back into that content folder, 16 zeros, and we're gonna paste it in here. Now, of course, it's, it is going to complain that it already has that folder inserted. So if we um, come across and paste that, so again, it's saying it's gonna, um, in effect, overwrite that folder, but of course, it's not gonna overwrite it because the folder, the actual file names uh, don't collide. So if we just say yes to that, that will then merge those two folders and we then should have our Halo 4 installed. So let's just let that run through and then come back in a second. So once those full uh, files have been extracted, let's come out of here and we should be able to get Halo 4 up and running. So I'll just do a restart just to rescan those folders. So if we now have a look, we should find Halo 4 popping up into our Aurora menu. And there we have it. And there we have Halo 4. And that now is fully installed onto our system and we should be able to run Halo 4. So that's Halo 4 all up and running. And the installation disc is the one that provides it with the online multiplayer functionality. So, th so that should all be there as well. So just for completeness, let's also do a normal two disc game then as a GOD package. So we're into ISO to God again. We're going to add in our ISO. I'm going to use Mass Effect 3 for this one. So let that come in. And there we have it all disk one of two. So let's add that ISO. Let's add a second ISO, which is the Mass Effect 3 disk two. And let's add that. So again, you can see there that we actually have the same title ID 
So it's actually going to package these up as a single GOD container. So let's convert that. So once that's finished, if we go into our extraction folder, you'll see we have our GOD package sitting there. And if I open that up and into the um, folder, you can see we now have two sets of data and launch files. So that is the actual, both DVDs have been combined into this one GOD package. So if we come back out to here, so that of course is the folder we need to now copy across into our Xbox hard drive. So if I just copy that onto the USB drive to begin with, we can then transfer that across. So back on our Xbox, I'm sure you've probably got the hang of this by now. We're going to go into our file manager, onto our USB drive, down to our um, GOD package. We're going to select that, copy it, then across to our hard drive, into our content folder, 16 zeros, and then we're going to paste it in there. So once that's all copied, Again, we're going to come back up in our directories and back to our system menu. We'll do a restart just to rescan and find those new um, DVDs. So we get scanning. Hopefully it should find those. And now we've got it finding some stuff. So let's see where they are going to pop up. And there we have our Mass Effect 3. So again, because we've used the GOD containers, it will automatically know which ones are disk one and disk two. So disk two then, of course, we don't need that showing. So let's come down to our um, bottom menu option here and hide that. And there we have our Mass Effect 3 dual disk game all installed and ready to go. So that pretty much covers everything there is to know about installing DVD based games. So while we're here, we can we can do a little bit of playing around with our Aurora menu. So we already know that we are starting to hide a number of titles from view. If we ever want to have a look at those, we can use the B key to get to our view menu and we can go across and there is an option here which says show hidden titles. If we check that and then come back out of here. You can see that our hidden um, DVDs are now um, sitting there. We, we, we know which ones are hidden and which ones aren't, but we can now get access to them. What we can also do now is we can come across and we can start to hide some of the stuff that we don't really use very often. So um, after we've got everything set up, a number of these um, system um, applications, we don't really need to have them sitting out there. So I, I tend to hide these. So if I go into my Y button again, I can come down the bottom here and I can hide that. And I can then do the same for another a few of these um, applications. And doing that, again, if I then go into my B button to get to my view options and turn off the show hidden files um, section, we now have a very clean, oh, I forgot one here. Let's just get rid of this one as well. We now have a clean menu, which is just our games. OK, so the last thing to have a look at now is how we can install any of the um, Microsoft Live Arcade style games, the ones which would normally just be downloaded from the Microsoft websites. So I have a couple of backed up Xbox Live Arcade games here. And these are in archive files. So if I open this one up here, this Pac-Man. If we open up the folder system, we can see that we have a, a folder in here. And again, that looks very much like one of our GOD packages. And in fact, that's exactly what it is. So these were installable games, which you would download from the Xbox Live um, arcade system. And again, if we look inside there, you'll see that it is exactly the same format as any other GOD package with some sort of data file sitting deeper down inside that. So all we need to do then, of course, is to take this GOD package and transfer that across to our Xbox. So let's do that on our um, USB drive. So it's our 584 directory that we're copying across here. So back on our Xbox, we're going to go into our file manager onto our USB drive. And it was the A8C version 
that we actually um, just um, created. So let's select that one. And then of course, we're just gonna copy that. And then we're gonna come back out of here onto our hard drive and into our content folder. And then we're just gonna paste it in there. Again, these files tended to be a lot smaller than the DVD systems. So let's, that should run through fairly quickly. And once that's complete, again, we're gonna come back out and rescan for that file. Now as it goes through and checks, we should find that coming up. And there it's found something. And that should be then somewhere in our system. We should have our Pac-Man DX. And that should all be ready to go and run. And there we have it. So that's our Xbox Live Arcade game. And you can see just exactly how easy those are to install. So that's everything that I wanted to cover in this video. And I hope you now have a pretty good understanding of how we get games for our Xbox from either our live media or, or, or various backup files onto our hard drive and then playable on our modded Xbox system. So I hope you've enjoyed that. It has been a long one um, and congratulations for sticking all the way to the end. Um, if you have enjoyed it, please do click that like button and subscribe to the channel. Uh, and don't forget, I produce lots more videos on gaming and coding and project work. So do please have a look around. I and hopefully will see you in another video very soon. And bye for now. For more games programming, electronics projects and retro gaming, Please make sure you like this video, subscribe to my YouTube channel and visit my website.